students this is dr prats and welcome to my channel so we're continuing with the orontogenic tumors and today we're going to study three important tumors calcifying epithelial orontogenic tumor squamous orontogenic tumor and adenomatoid orontogenic tumor let's roll so all our uh, presentations are in a questioning format and it starts with what is the pathology? Why do we need to understand the pathology? The tree house, that is how did it occur, which is nothing but etiopathogenesis. How to diagnose using your investigating tools, that is radiography and histopathology, and if any other required. How to treat, very important, or how to plan your treatment. Followed by summary of whatever we learnt and Lastly, and very importantly, answering multiple choice question. So let's begin. Every lesson has an objective in my presentations and at the end of it, you should be able to describe the clinical features, correlate with the radiographic and the histopathological features of these three tumors, that is calcifying epithelial ontogenic tumor, adenomatoid orontogenic tumor and squamous orontogenic tumor. Of course, we'll be discussing the differential diagnosis under each one of them, whether it's radiographic or clinical differential diagnosis, and how would you come to a final diagnosis? CEOT stands for calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor, and it was coined by Pinberg and that's why it is called as Pinberg tumor. He's done extensive contribution in the field of orontogenic tumors. And uh, the pathogenesis, when it comes to the intraosseous tumors, it is supposed to originate either from reduced enamel epithelium or from stratum intermedium. If you want to know more, or if you want to understand more from the histology point of view, please go back to the uh, series of cysts where in the first uh, presentation, I have explained in detail about the origin and uh, the different structures of the enamel organ, which will give rise to cysts and tumors. So please go back and uh, refer to that. The link will be given in the description box below. And if it is an extra osseous tumor, then the origin is uh, supposed to be the cell rest of dental lamina, that is cell rest of serrae or the basal cells of oral epithelium. Clinically, uh, it is expected to uh, be evident within the oral cavity at around fourth decade of life and mandible is the most commonly affected the jaw compared to maxilla and the ratio is about two is to one and the area which is affected is the posterior area that is premolar and uh, molar area and it is usually associated uh, with an impacted uh, tooth and uh, it could be a slow growing expansile mass it need not be very fast growing uh, aggressive tumor it is quite a slow growing uh, mass radiographically uh, it can be unilocular or multilocular and when it is multilocular it can either look like honeycomb appearance or give a soap bubble appearance based on how big or small the locules are this has also been explained in the first uh, presentation of the series on odontogenic tumors please go back and refer to that and within this uh, radiolucency there are scattered radio opacities as you can see here and uh, these are nothing but the calcifications by now if you haven't guessed that is why the name calcifying epithelial or antrogenic tumor okay and as you can see it's associated with an impact or two there is a huge radiolucency and there is radio opacity and this kind of uh, appearance is called as mixed radiolucent radio opaque and the term or the description given for this is a wind driven or a falling snow appearance this whatever you're seeing in the radiograph the margins of the defects are scalloped as you can see here meaning it is slightly concave basically represents the resorption process that is going on due to the tumor 
histopathologically it has very 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 unique features so here you can see that the cells are polyhedral okay the cells you can see the appreciate the outline of the cell very very clearly it is polyhedral and uh, the nuclei are hyperchromatic and it can vary in size you can see they're all of different different sizes but basically it is hyperchromatic and could fill up the entire uh, cell the stroma is uh, fibrous that is the connective tissue the inflammatory reaction is typically absent in this uh, connective tissue stroma there is also extracellular eosinophilic material present which is referred to as amyloid and this amyloid can undergo uh, calcifications to form concentric rings which we'll see again in the next uh, slide so you can see that there are sheets of epithelial cells you can appreciate the cells here so this kind of arrangement is called sheet like arrangement and you will see amyloid here and you can also see this hematoxyphilic calcifications it can also form concentric rings that is called as lease gang rings you can see there are small concentric or uh, a roundish hematoxyphilic structure so these are called as lease gang rings the management of cot has to be very very careful because it has to be differentiated from the poorly differentiated uh, carcinoma in order to avoid any kind of uh, over treatment um, so a thorough histopathological uh, uh, examination must be done to diagnose it uh, properly whether it's a carcinoma or whether it is a cot and uh, a complete excision of the tumor with a border of normal bone should be curative uh, anything which is lesser than that that is in nucleation curatage will result in recurrence and incomplete removal will also result in recurrence so when you're uh, excising the tumor you have to be very careful and uh, a border of normal bone must be uh, removed so an aggressive form of uh, management is required in case of cot the next tumor which we are going to study is adenomatoid odontogenic tumor always when this is added oid it is resembling something like cementoid means it is resembling cementum. dentinoid means it is resembling dentin so the term adenomatoid is given because it has cyst like uh, structure so adenoma is a uh, term which is referred for a salivary gland tumor so because of those cyst like structures it is called as adenomatoid but it is ruled out very clearly that it is odontogenic in origin uh, by a lot of uh, studies and histochemical uh, analysis so adenomatoid odontogenic tumor is the term it is used but it doesn't mean that it is a salivary gland tumor it is also uh, thought to have uh, some resemblance to ameloblastoma or even a variant of ameloblastoma but uh, that's not really uh, proven and uh, uh, a definition could be a tumor of odontogenic epithelium with duct-like structures and with varying degree of inductive change in the connective tissue could be a definition for this uh, tumor uh, dental lamina and its remnants are thought to give rise to this uh, tumor. Clinically, it has uh, a quite a distinctive picture. It is benign and it is non-aggressive in nature, opposite to ameloblastoma, which is quite aggressive in nature. And it is usually seen in second to third decade of life and it is seen in uh, maxilla and in anterior maxilla. Young women are more commonly affected and uh, canine which is uninterrupted is the most common site where the tumor is seen. So these are the unique features. Women, second to third decade, 
anterior maxilla especially an unerupted canine should give you a clue of adenomatoid odontogenic tumor uh, there are different types follicular is when it is surrounding the impacted tooth in this manner there is an extra follicular type which is seen in between the roots or anywhere within the jaw and you can also see a peripheral variant that is on the soft tissue these are all intraosseous types Radiologically, it's not really pathognomic, but it is still uh, typical for this uh, tumor. That is, you will see a unilocular radiolucency along with uh, radio-opaque uh, margins, and there could be some faint radio opacities, uh, which are referred to as snowflake calcifications, which could help in uh, ruling out uh, differential diagnosis. Histopathologically, it is very, very characteristic. Uh, we, it is a well-defined tumor, which basically indicates that uh, it is slow growing, it is benign, it is non-aggressive. All these three things are depicted by a well-defined capsule. And this in encloses cells that is either spindle or cuboidal cells, which are arranged in the form of whorls or strands of epithelium as you can see in this picture so these are all the whorls or these are the strands of epithelium okay it can be either cuboidal cell or spindle shaped cells along with this we'll see microcysts which actually look like duct like structures and these microcysts are lined by tall columnar cells which resemble lamelloblasts. And this is another picture which is showing the microcysts. And here also you can see that it is lined by cells uh, with uh, hypochromatic uh, nuclei. So here I think you can clearly appreciate how the microcysts are lined by tall columnar cells which resemble amyloblasts with the nuclei away from the basement membrane, correct? And these microcysts can, can contain either homogeneous eosinophilic material or they could even show amorphous or crystalline calcifications. And the most important and characteristic feature is the rosette-like pattern. Rosette basically means rose-like. So the spindle cells of the tumor are arranged in the form of rose petals. You know how the petals are overlapping one another exactly the same way the cells are arranged and they can also be called as swirling pattern. So rosette like pattern is the most characteristic feature of this tumor. Coming to differential diagnosis, the first and foremost is the dentiger assist because of the association with an impacted tooth it has to be differentiated both clinically as well as radiographically and histopathology of course will finalize the diagnosis. Uh, COC and COT as you know are uh, uh, the cystic and the tumor uh, counterparts but both of them radiographically look very similar to adenomatoid odontogenic tumor. Uh, especially with the uh, specks of uh, radio opacities within the radiolucency, but all of them have distinct histopathological picture and that's how you differentiate them from each other. Management can be conservative and a simple enucleation will suffice the treatment. There are no recurrences. The last tumor which we are going to study today is a squamous odontogenic tumor. It is again benign tumor. It is locally infiltrative and very occasionally it can get uh, aggressive and pathogenesis is that it arises from epithelial cell risk of malasis. So clinically it is quite rare. It affects the young adults and both the jaws uh, can be affected and like I said it is seen very close to the roots of erupted teeth along the lateral side. It can be usually asymptomatic but sometimes there can be a a gingival swelling and the patient might refer to it as being mildly painful. So radiographically it shows uh, radiolucency along the lateral surface of the root as you can clearly see here and uh, it is quite difficult to distinguish it from the vertical bone loss which happens following periodontitis 
of course uh, histopathological diagnosis will be confirmatory so histologically the tumor can be described as being well circumscribed and you will see islands of squamous epithelial cells which are set in connective tissue stroma and these islands at the periphery show flattened epithelial cells which is quite characteristic sometimes we can even see foci of keratin or parakeratin and uh, these may also contain uh, some calcifications or uh, eosinophilic kind of structures we cannot really see in this image management is uh, quite uh, conservative and denucleation with curettage is uh, sufficient if there is any teeth involved then extraction of such teeth is mandated and recurrences have been reported and the most potential complication is the development of intraosseous squamous cell carcinoma from squamous odontogenic tumor like i always say do not get overwhelmed all these oral pathologies will follow the same pattern or same way of description clinical picture radiography histopathology and treatment so you just need to remember what happens in these four areas of each oral pathology so let's uh, start with uh, cot so cot is associated uh, with uh, mandible and especially the posterior premolar molar area it is slow growing and quite an expansile mass radiographically what we see is called as snow driven appearance because of the mixed radio lucency and radio opacity and histopathologically we see sheets of polyhedral cells with hyperchromatic nuclei and there is amyloid like areas extracellularly and concentric hematoxyphilic calcifications which are referred to as lee's gang rings the treatment has to be slightly aggressive and the treatment must not be overdone because sometimes this can resemble poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma so that has to be ruled out before you decide the plan of treatment the next tumor we studied was adenomatoid odontogenic tumor very classically seen in young girls associated with impacted canine radiographically it can be unilocular radiolucency associated with the impacted tooth uh, it is unique to this but it is not really pathognomic a lot of differential diagnosis like dentigeresis coc and cot but histopathologically you can rule them all out because it has unique uh, rosette like structures that is spindle cells arranged in the form of rose petal like uh, pattern and along with this you will also see duct like structures and that is the reason it is called as adenomatoid because it resembles salivary ducts but uh, it's not really salivary gland in origin it is odontogenic in origin so these microcysts are lined by tall columnar amyloblast like cells and may contain eosinophilic granuloma or it could even contain some calcifications and uh, the treatment is quite uh, conservative simple in in nucleation and cure touch will suffice the treatment and the last tumor is squamous odontogenic tumor this is seen in the anterior teeth maxilla is more commonly affected uh, radiographically you will see radiolucency but uh, uh, this can be confused with the vertical bone loss which is associated with periodontitis histopathologically you will see islands of squamous epithelial cells with flattened periphery in a connective tissue stroma the treatment is uh, quite uh, conservative but um, the potential complication is the development of intraosseous squamous cell carcinoma so we need to be very careful regarding this tumor so coming to the multiple choice question uh, from this uh, presentation a 11 year old girl shows an asymptomatic swelling in relation to 
impacted maxillary canine histopathology shows duct like structures and rosette like pattern the diagnosis would be i think it's very easy for you because just now we finished uh, revising all of the tumors when i say that uh, there will be one correct answer and the others are distractors and uh, when you read the stem already you know that it is leaning towards adenomatoid odontogenic tumor but just to rule out dentigerous cyst can also be associated with an impacted tooth but does it show duct like structures and rosette like pattern no the cot show it no it does not does squamous odontogenic tumor show any such histopathological uh, depiction it doesn't so aot is your uh, diagnosis or the final answer so like i always say your uh, comprehensive type of multiple choice question is just like how you arrive to diagnosis in your clinical scenario and that is the reason why such questions are asked in your examinations Okay so when they say 11 year old girl anterior teeth impacted canine asymptomatic already you're thinking of aot along with that when you see rosette like pattern and duct like structures or microcysts aot is confirmed so if you liked my presentation today and if you like to answer more such mcqs you can go to my website there are several of them which you could use for your practice and i hope that helps and if you have any doubt please leave a comment in the description box below and i'll try to answer all of them these are my references like i said uh, cosin is one of my favorite book which i refer to and it is very good for uh, undergraduate students i strongly recommend the book and apart from that i have also referred the book for odontogenic tumors written by uh, ricard and uh, philipson thank you students and keep smiling